guys, today we are taking a look at these Crayola Signature water-based markers and we're going to make a super cute mermaid. So if you want to know how to get the most out of your water-based markers, especially your Crayolas, keep watching. Hey art nerds, today I am working on the field test for the Crayola Signature brush and detail dual tip markers. These are water-based markers and part of the Crayola signature line. You guys can check out the field test for these wonderful markers by clicking this card over here. And I had so much fun doing the cute little mermaid for the Crayola blendable markers that I think I'm gonna do a companion piece. And since I didn't sketch her out for you guys, I will sketch out my second mermaid for you guys. And I have lots of chibi drawing tutorials here on this channel if you like my chibi art and you think it's cute. And you guys can either check the description below or you can click the link, the card here for like the first of those videos. Like I said, I have many, so it's hard to, to link all of those cards. Cause you only get five. So I want this young lady to have kind of a shocked face and I already kind of sketched in the basics using pink color Eno lead. You can also use a color pencil for this. And even for super cartoony art like this, I like to do a little bit of construction to help make sure I get everything in place, everything lined up, everything looking nice. And I am sketching this on a Strathmore 300 series Bristol Zentangle tile. So it's kind of pre-cut to six by six, which makes it really nice for some of these quick little field tests. And you can find the links in the description below to get everything I'm testing today, or everything I'm using in this video, rather. And I'm putting down a lot of stray lines here, so I'm gonna clean those up a little bit once I have the sketch kind of finalized, but before inking. And since she's underwater, we wanna think about her hair as being floaty, so kind of up and having momentum in the direction that she was coming from. But if she was coming to a stop, it would keep going while she slowed down. Love drawing mermaids. I did an entire Inktober in 2016 called 31 Days Under the Waves, which is nothing but mer people prompts. And it was so much fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Okay, now we need something like a chest plate of some sort. And I really like the cute little clamshell I gave the other girl, maybe a sand dollar. So I don't actually know off the top of my head how to draw a sand dollar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on over to Google and I'm gonna Google sand dollar and I'm gonna use that as reference because when you don't know how to draw something, you should use reference. And it's not gonna draw it for me and I'm not tracing it. But this way, I know what a sand dollar actually looks like so that people will recognize it as a sand dollar in the illustration. And if anybody tells you that using reference like this is cheating, they don't know what they're talking about and they're trying to hinder your artistic growth. Because using reference like this helps you, per helps you create a better piece. So it's making you a stronger artist. And you can take that from somebody with an MFA in comic art. We used drawing reference all the time, all sorts of drawing reference, not just the internet, but also like little animal figurines. And that way you can kind of rotate them in your hands and manipulate them from all different angles and get a good idea of what they would look like. Every couple of years, it becomes like a thing to tell younger artists that using reference is cheating. And every couple of years, I want to, I just want to put out a little PSA that it is not cheating. And that strong, good artists, heck, the great masters use camera obscura, which would take 
the person who was sitting, the image of the person who was sitting for the artist and flip it onto the canvas so it was upside down. They'd trace it like that. They would literally trace it and then paint from there. And that wasn't considered cheating. And that isn't considered cheating. So even people who have like hoity-toity ideas of what art should be typically agree that Leonardo da Vinci is an artist and he used reference. So you can use reference too. All right, we've got our cutie cutie little mermaid all sketched out on our Zentangle paper. You don't have to use Zentangle paper. It's just kind of appropriately sized. So it makes it easy to use. And I wanna erase a little bit, not all of this, cause I'm gonna leave a lot of this pink and don't worry, it won't be, hopefully it won't be distracting. Hopefully it will add to the piece. I've used water-based markers many times and I have good results with this. So hopefully, but I do wanna kind of remove some of the stray ones in case they get in the way. Always well, fine when I draw for you guys, I end up having to do like twice as many lines as I would normally have to do because I'm distracting myself a little bit, which is fine. We're drawing together and I always like drawing with you guys. Drawing with y'all is fun, especially love drawing cute things with you guys. Got a little bit of a Betty Boop face going on. I could even skip inking and just start working like this because with water-based markers and even with alcohol-based markers, and I have lots of tutorials on that here on the channel. Um, when you're using these kind of leads, you don't really have to ink them. It's not like graphite, which can ruin your, your markers by kind of ruining the brushes in the markers. This colored lead doesn't really do that. So you guys get the gist. I'm gonna go ahead and clean her up off camera. Okay, our sketch is just about finished. As I look at it, I'm like, oh, it would be real cute to have a little boop boop there. There she goes. Isn't she super duper cute? Yes, yes she is. And now you know how to draw her. So I think I'm still deciding whether or not I want to ink her, but these are the colors we have. We don't have any we have browns, which are skin tones for sure. I'm just not sure how I wanna handle them with this. Now, what I also have, and I was gonna get its own field test, but I may use it anyway, just a little bit, are the Crayola brush tip markers. And these are sort of the predecessors to the signature brush and detail markers, but you get 32 colors instead of 16 colors. And I know I complained up a storm when I did the unboxing swatch, but I kind of think maybe like bronze or tan, uh, tan and bronze for her skin tone will look cute, especially since our other mermaid is very, very pale, very pale with kind of fluorescent -y skin. So I think we will steal the tan and bronze from this and use it to augment this set since there are no real skin tones in the brush and detail set. So that is kind of a detracting point on the brush and detail set that there are no skin tones. And that's something I bring up every time or almost every time I review Crayola products is that I really want to see, I need to see better representations of skin tones. So we've got tan, bronze and brown and those are the ones I'm gonna use. And I think since we're gonna work with darker colors, I am gonna go ahead and ink her and I will do that off camera. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. I've got my cute little mermaid all inked up. But one of the first things I wanna do is I realized that when I did the unboxing swatch for these markers, I tested them with watercolor on watercolor paper, or rather I test, tested them with water on watercolor paper. I did not test them out on the paper I'm gonna use for this field test. And I did not test them out with a glycerin base blender marker. So I've got an Ecoline blender marker here. I've got a water brush full of water. 
I've got the skin tones I'm going to be using. And I've also got my dual tipped markers here. And for the life of me, I struggle to remember the name of them. So I'm just gonna do a few demo swatches here and then I'm gonna need to figure out how I can sort my table out. So that I'll have room for everything. So I'm gonna try it with water, but I think I'm actually gonna try to stay away from using water too much since we're using a Bristol paper and Bristol doesn't necessarily have the capacity for handling water. That's the orange. So maybe one, two layers of Bristol, I mean water at most, just to kind of get some of the lightest tones in there and then give them plenty of time to dry. You could also use a Sakura Koi colorless blender or a Tombow ABT colorless blender. All this is, this is the Ecoline one, you can refill these, is it's got like glycerin in it and water and it helps sort of blend out the water-based color. Although these are fairly juicy markers, even the fine tips are fairly juicy, which is unusual for these sort of dual tip markers. I find that with the water color and water, yeah. Water base and watercolor markers, when they have the dual tips, one of the tips usually ends up dying. Let's do a little bit of a blending rainbow on this paper. I actually don't like that yellow, so we'll skip that yellow. We'll start with the larger, slightly darker, less like a highlighter yellow. And in case you guys missed it, the unbox and swatch is right here. You can click this link. Okay, so for these fine tips, these are kind of like the intermediary colors. And I think you could benefit from having, let's try, let's get some of that excess red off first. Very quick to start tearing up the paper. So I'm gonna have to be careful about blending. The brush tips, aren't so bad on this paper. It's the fine tips tend to exacerbate the problem. And I think I'll do another blending set as well with, let's do some greens and let's not use the fine tip. These, there's enough juice in them that if you work fairly fast, you can get some decent blending. And there's enough colors that you can even kind of go color to color and do some blending as well. And I would love to see, I just finished the field test for the new Crayola blendable blending markers. Um, and those are their first alcohol-based markers. You guys can click this card here to check out that review. And I would love to see them expand the color range. This color, this set is nice in that you get like these really beautiful jewel tones and you get a lot of them, but they're, oh no, I said there were no skin tones in this, but there's actually a brown. It's a bit like a desaturated skin tone. And then this fine tip brown, which is not, not super great. And then we get kind of a pinky, yeah, a pinky color, which could kind of be used as a skin tone. But like I mentioned earlier, rather than fight with that, I'm actually going to use these. And these are sort of the predecessor to these markers. The tips are much harder to get off. They are an earlier version of Crayola water-based brush markers. And it looks like they took the fine liner body and kind of jerry-rigged a tip in there. But as you can see, they have a little bit better skin tones. So we're gonna be using these for our skin tones for our mermaid. So are you guys ready to get started? Are you as excited as I am? Let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so I'm actually going to begin this video by doing exactly what I said I was going to avoid. I am going to use blue 
on my craft mat. You could really just use a scrap piece of paper for this though. It doesn't have to be a craft mat. And I'm going to grab a paper towel because I still have some red in my brush, unfortunately. And I'm going to start picking up some of this blue and using it as like a light background wash. And then I'm gonna have to give it lots of dry time. You guys can almost barely see how light that background wash is. I've been playing around with Pentel's brush pins as watercolor brush pins. You can check those out over on my Instagram. I hope the video will be out eventually. And this was a technique I really enjoyed with those. So you can also use this with your Crayola super tip markers. You can use them as watercolor markers a little bit, kind of extends, even if you have the 100 pack, kind of extends the range. It kind of makes some of the skin tones a little more usable because there's a wider range of what you can do. In fact, I have a tutorial, a video tutorial here on the channel, I believe, on how to use super tips as watercolor markers. I also have a bonus tutorial over at natasoup.blogspot.com if you prefer your tutorials in written form. I can also even use this blue to sort of do an undertone, which I might do because it's so light and that way we can really be effective in our underwater look. That was something I would have liked to have done with the other mermaid picture we did, the one with the blendable markers or blending markers. I keep wanting to say blendable markers. <laughs> Again, you can just use a piece of scrap plastic so long as it's smooth and non-porous as sort of a palette for this. So this is a really easy technique that almost anybody, if you have a water brush or even just a cheap, uh, a cheap watercolor brush. There we go. Brain is not working this morning. Haven't quite had all my coffee but it is a really easy, basic technique. It can be a little bit messy. So, you know, it's good to maybe you do it at a table. I used to do all my art sitting on the floor. Even as an adult, I do a lot of my art sitting on the floor because I need the space. But this is something that is just so much easier if you have a table workspace to work at. And I don't mind that we've gotten kind of uneven coverage. Go in and do her eyes. And then I'm actually gonna use this, I think, to begin adding just a little bit of tone. We'll see how well this works. I haven't, I don't think I've tried this with water-based markers, so this will be fun. We're going to learn something today. And it might just be, we learned this doesn't work. I think I did this, something similar to this, when I did the mermaid markers field test though, so I think I've done, and I do this for watercolor. This is called underglazing, and you're just using prior layer to sort of help you set the tone. Now we are painting today on 300 series Bristol. So this is not, it is not usually intended to be a water medium. It can handle light applications of water, like for inking, ink wash, that sort of stuff. Um, even gouache, but this much water is not its friend and I did not secure it so it's going to buckle on us. And that's not its fault. That's just the nature of what I've done to it. Okay, though, looking, looking pretty good so far. You could dab some of the blue in wet into wet. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that brave. I am going to give this a chance to hopefully dry and check in in a minute. 
Now that this has had plenty of time to dry and you guys can kind of see how I handled the shading, I want to, hmm, I could just leave the background like it is, but I kind of want to practice doing kind of a wash effect with these to see how, or an all over color to see how they would handle. So I think doing large spaces is always kind of, kind of complicated. And as you guys can see, all the water made it kip up. I tried to tape it down a couple different ways um, and <laughs> did not have much luck with that. So if you want to use this effect and you don't want your paper all wibble wobble, then you're going to need to find a way to secure it a little better than I could. Start, I guess, with a small space. And just kind of carefully, but quickly, because what's going to help us What's going to help prevent streaking is wet into wet because it's going to diffuse the color and kind of soften any streaking effects. So, you know, work mostly in sections. Because if there is going to be streaking, you want it to be less noticeable. So, so doing kind of a line. I found that for these sort of water-based markers going in lines rather than the sort of circular pattern recommended. It helps prevent too much paper abrasion because you're not working the paper quite as much. You're not scrubbing at the paper as much as you would if you were doing like circular movements. Though you guys can already see, I am getting some lines. So we have a few different techniques we can use if we want a perfectly smooth, kind of watery background. We can go over this again with the same color. So we have a darker color. We can go over this with the, with the water brush, adding water to the page and kind of reactivating the ink and redistributing it, which may result in sort of patchy areas of color like we've already got with this wash that we just applied or um, which works well for like an underwater kind of feeling but if you want a solid fill of color that doesn't have any streaks at all that's not really what you're looking for or we can do we can go over the whole area with the eco line and kind of blend some of the streaks out like that. And I'm gonna think about which one I'm gonna do as I fill this in, but I'm gonna demonstrate all the techniques after so that you guys can kind of see. And I am applying some pressure with the brush. Brush definitely makes it easier than using, say, the Crayola Super Tips to fill such a large area. Makes it faster, at least. These trays are really in the way. I may end up just ditching the trays. See, the streaky background isn't really doing it too much for me. since my paper is kind of kipping up a bit. Just using my nails to hold it down without really putting my fingertips on the paper. This helps me from putting, even though my hands are clean and fairly recently washed, it helps prevent me from putting excess oils down on the paper, which can sometimes cause a resist. So some areas are getting more coverage than others, so they're darker. So I'm gonna need to do something where I kind of even out the tone. And these fiber brushes are actually holding up a little bit better than the Crayola blending markers. So they're alcohol markers that I just reviewed holding up a little bit better than those. Those were starting to get really mushy and fray. And this one here is holding up decently well. It is fraying a little bit. 
Um, that tends to be what happens with these fiber tip markers. I'm trying to be careful not to get too much into her skin. You can do outlines around the body if you have difficulty kind of controlling your strokes. Oh, paper is starting to separate here into two layers. Maybe overworking this. Now I've got just a plain spritzer bottle, plain water. And I really should have taped this down first, but these use water reactive dyes. Now what's gonna happen is it is gonna kind of migrate into her hair and her skin. And I'm okay with that because it's gonna help really give this kind of a cute underwater sort of effect. Spray in there. I should have taped this sucker down cause it's gonna start to buckle all over the place. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of salt. Actually, what I'm, hmm. it's like I should tape this down. What have I got? Considering I'm working on a non-stick surface anyway, taping it down might not do a whole lot of good. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt. This is just kosher salt here and there. I found that kosher salt, at least when I was messing with the Pintel brush pins, kosher salt can have some really fun effects on dye-based watercolor markers. And Crayola markers are dye-based and water-based, so we should be able to get some effect out of them. We'll see, we're gonna find out together. I'm really throwing lots of different techniques at you guys today. But already you guys can kind of see it's got that underwater look going on. Then I'm going to use a paper towel and I'm just gonna dab up a little bit of the excess water because that's gonna make this take a really long time to dry. And when it comes to Crayola, I greatly prefer using their Super Tip or even these markers here um, for, their, for watercolor rather than their watercolor watercolors. Uh, I really don't care too much for their watercolor watercolors. So we've gotten some really nice underwater effects from this. They're very reactive, which is fun. And I didn't even have to mask her face. It didn't go too much into her face, but it's starting to go into her tail, which looks really cool. So I'm going to be really excited to see how these dry. This has had a chance to dry. I'm going to use a drafting brush just to brush off that excess salt. Okay, I think we can finally start working on her skin tone. So, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I've pulled three colors from the other Crayola brush marker set. And I think I'm gonna use my Ecoline blender rather than using water to blend this out. That way we can get kind of like a full range of different techniques we can use with these markers. And I grabbed these because this set doesn't exactly have the best skin tone markers, but I am gonna grab a couple that will be useful. Go ahead and make sure my eco line is clean by cleaning it off on a paper towel. Then I'm gonna start with tan, which is really not tan at all. And I'm gonna grab a piece of paper for a cover sheet. Won't comment too much about these brush markers since that field test will be coming up eventually. I will say that it's actually quite warm in here and my hands are very hot, hot. So they're nice and juicy right now. I can't attest as to whether or not that is a permanent situation. Juicy is good, although that also means these will run out a little faster. So that's something you might wanna keep in mind. I'm getting a little bit of blue migrating in, which I thought might happen. A lot of these dye base markers are not, um, they are very quick to react to whatever you put on top of them, minus say alcohol marker ink or alcohol solvents. 
So anything water-based tends to reactivate these sort of markers and inks, which can make them a little hard to use sometimes. It can also, on the right paper, in the right circumstances though, make them very blendable, which is definitely a trait people who are interested in using them for illustration may enjoy. All right, so we've just filled in her face so far. Now we're gonna use the eco line, working our way up, gonna blend this out. So water-based markers blend differently from alcohol-based markers. With alcohol-based markers, what you're seeing is blending is actually color getting pushed to the back of the page and being softened. Whereas with water-based markers, you really are getting a blend. It's picking up some of that color as you can see by the brush tip, and moving it to the new area. And I think it's an important distinction to be aware of because it allows you to use different sort of blending techniques and that way you can find something that really works best for you and your needs. I'm noticing, I said I wasn't going to talk about these, but since it's already getting mushy, I thought it was worth bringing up that I'm noticing my tan just from the little bit of coloring I've done here. And you guys have noticed I really haven't used a lot of pressure. It's starting to get mushy and kind of bent out of shape. Whereas the blue from this set that I used to do the background, it was holding up a lot better. And I know I've mentioned before that these are sort of the predecessors. So it's good to know that perhaps someone else who caught those markers earlier on and reviewed them, or maybe someone in quality control, noticed that they weren't really fitting the need quite as well and did something about it. So next, I'm going to use Coral Reef, how fitting. Unfortunately, all I have is a fine tip for this, which is gonna make doing the br blush a lot harder. I have to be careful about blending out with this. I might actually just use the previous color. We'll see. That's what I would do with alcohol markers is I will use the previous color to sort of blend out blushes and such. With water-based markers, I didn't want, so if I use the ego line to blend it, it's going to pick up some of that color too, which can be helpful if done light-handed, but can also kind of mess up what you had going. I'm using long, kind of gentle strokes to apply my color. It's actually very easy to use. And the bristle isn't getting torn up. It's kind of resisting abrasion. Next, I think I'll use bronze to start doing some of the shading. And there isn't really too much of a color difference between bronze and tan. Tan's actually more of what I would think of like as a, a peachy color rather than like a actual tan. And bronze is more of a tan. And I feel like every video I do where I review Crayola products, I beg Crayola to please release more skin tones in these sort of sets. So I will continue my plea here. By having more skin tones in your sets, even your signature sets, which I know are aimed at adults. Well, that's where they seem to be marketed, adults and older teens. And it really seems like it's more for like the brush lettering or coloring book demographic. Having more skin tones, or at least the option to buy a skin tone pack. And that way people who do brush lettering, maybe and they won't, they're not gonna be drawing people ever. Um, they don't have to have those colors if they don't want them. But then you're opening up 
your product to artists who maybe are on a budget or they're familiar with Crayola and they like the products and they want to be able to continue to use Crayolas or they can't deal with toxic fumes or they they're really concerned about you know being able to wash it out or maybe they're a parent artist and they've got young kids and their young kids are always trying to play with their art supplies so they want something that if their kid got into it it wouldn't make them sick I mean I can think of a lot of people who would actually want nicer affordable easily accessible water-based markers and other types of markers because I know the new blending markers are alcohol based um, but they would really be interested in more skin tones or more pastels or you know colors that can be used to kind of blend out I, I really think that is an area Crayola needs to investigate the multicultural markers are okay but the washable um, like the big washable, they call the regular markers. The washable ones, um, they are just terrible. They're terrible. <laughs> I really hate using them. And I can't use them for this because they react to the water differently and they react to blending differently because of the glycerin in them um, makes it whatever. They're, they just don't handle the same. All right, next we're gonna, we're gonna use brown. Actually, no, let's use cafe. Nope, brown and dark chocolate. I wonder if they're the same color. Oh, and I promised to show you guys something. So, I'll swatch these and see if they're actually the same color, whether we'll see if Crayola is consistent. I think they might be. Almost, but not quite. I would say they're different colors let's see yeah that's definitely not the same color so I'll give this a chance to dry and I'll actually demonstrate what I promised I would demonstrate earlier where we have um, a field of color and I'm gonna quickly do it with red right I'm actually getting a fairly nice even blend here Wah. But you can still see some streaks, right? Let's let's do it more realistic to what I did. Because I had all these little fiddly bits. Right, so. We can, so I'm gonna use the spray bottle to give the whole thing kind of a neat texture. We can also use a brush marker. Let me clean this one out a little bit. A water brush with water, obviously. And we can just kind of go over the whole area and activate it and kind of redistribute some of the color. We can also use that to do a gradient. We can use our Ecoline or other glycerin blending marker. Do the same thing. It'll help smooth out some of those lines. It will also help you do a gradient if you so desire. Clean that brush tip off as well. Or we can go over it trying to replicate my quick and dirty coloring style. Let that dry or not even, I mean, and then apply another layer on top of it, wet into wet so that it'll all kind of blend together. Now, this method is fine if you're covering a smaller area and there's not gonna be a dry time in between. So it's not gonna work for the mermaid we just did. These two methods um, are a little bit better for if, you, if you're working with fiddly bits. With this method, really doing a good job of smoothing everything out, but it also will give you, you know, kind of varied varied coverage. And if you care about that, you know, that's sort of a your mileage may vary situation. And you guys can probably see we're getting a glycerin buildup. See the shiny? That's the glycerin. That's what makes it washable. Uh, so it might be wise. When I start noticing that, I realize I'm not going to be able to get a lot, too many more layers out of it. 
So I just start tightening things up and kind of closing up shop if I can. So I'm using brown just to do some final shadows. I was really hoping to make her a little bit darker. I, I thought, I forgot how really light tan is. I'm having a little bit of a control issue because the paper is kipping. You guys also should keep in mind that these are dye base markers. Dye base markers are not archival. If you or your children create a piece of art that you just happen to love and you really want to save it, you really want it to stick around, you want to have it on display, you can put it behind UV glass and that will help to an extent. But also just kind of keep in mind that dye base markers have a shorter shelf life. It's kind of the unfortunate nature of the beast as my mom was very fond of saying. Well, she wouldn't say unfortunate. She would just be like, yes, the nature of the beast. Like, you knew what you got into. We'll do this nice sort of raspberry pink for the inside of her mouth. Now see, with these sort of markers, I kind of know why they did the lighter ones. These are intended for more for brush calligraphers than they are for illustrators. Um, and unfortunately, Crayola just doesn't really offer much, honestly, for illustrators. Um, it would be really nice if they also released some of, sorry, thinking and working, some of the lighter colors as brush tips because the lighter colors can actually be used to blend out the darker colors. And it's not as effective doing it with this little bitty fine point as it would be doing with a brush that's gonna have more color lay down. So, but there are some really beautiful jewel tones in this. Move things around a bit so you guys can see. Get some really beautiful jewel tones. Some really fun, pretty colors. So what color do I want to do her tail? And do I wanna go in with the blue like I did on our other mermaid? Oh, I just love the splatter effect, but we're gonna lose some of that because just the nature of how these markers work, how dye base markers work, we're gonna lose some of that, which is a little bit of a shame. And I will note that the salt I put down, which gave me a really lovely texture, um, it is kind of getting in the way. I did remove most of it, but there's still some bits and pieces. So you just want to be kind of careful about that. It's a really fun technique, but it's not a perfect one. Okay. We're going to use our water brush. Cause I find that the, um, the echo line glycerin based blender that it has a tendency to desaturate colors in a way that the water doesn't really do that. So we're gonna start with the water brush. And if you guys find this to be kind of a cheaty field test, if you don't really dig that I'm relying on a water brush for a lot of my techniques, that is okay. Let me know nicely in the comments. Just ask me to do another video. Let me know nicely in the comments that you'd like a video where we just do blending techniques with Crayola markers and no additional markers. And I'm happy to oblige. I want to help you guys. But I, I think since knowing these techniques really kind of widens what I can do, I love sharing them with people because I feel like it really opens these materials up and makes them much more usable. A lot of people don't realize how water soluble Crayola markers, um, at least the super tips, pretty much everything but the super washable markers are very water soluble. Um, and you can do a lot of really neat watercolory techniques. And it means you don't have to buy the more expensive markers like the mermaid markers or whatever. You can get a lot of those techniques with these very, very inexpensive, inexpensive, very, very inexpensive, very accessible water-based markers. And that's something I really, I really love. I love being able to do 
techniques and tutorials and videos that sort of make... I love reviewing expensive stuff, obviously. I review plenty of that. But I also love doing videos on very inexpensive things and kind of opening those doors up to a new generation of artists or a new collection of people who maybe didn't think that it was within their grasp. And now, considering the price point is $14, you know, maybe, maybe you can do it. And I mean, having some of these accessories, it does add to the cost, but not not significantly. It doesn't price it so far out that you can't buy it. Water brushes are inexpensive and you can get them at Michael's all the time, often on sale. It's also, I know I harp on this, it's also why I'm harsher though on more expensive supplies that promise big and deliver little because I I just know someone on a budget because I've been that person and sometimes I am that person. I've Someone on a budget bought it, believing what the hype said, and were frustrated with the performance and blamed themselves. And I mean, of course, there's a learning curve, but I like to think most people can kind of tell the difference between, well, most older artists can tell the difference between learning curve and, you know, this material is fighting you. And as a more experienced artist, I think for me, doing stuff with materials that fight me is good for me sometimes because I learn new things. But I don't want younger artists or newer artists to have to fight their supplies. And see, I'm fighting the salt I put down, but that's something I did to myself. Otherwise, though, these markers are pretty nice. Um, yeah, I like the revised brush tip. It is starting to get mushy, but I'm also like fighting the salt I put down. So, you know. That's on me, y'all. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry, and that way we got kind of a nice, lighter, even color. And then I wanna start doing, she's gonna be cute. I think she's gonna end up being even cuter than the other mermaid I did, which is, it is nice. Oh, I kinda want this color here, coral reef for her, for her sand dollar. But since it's such a fine point, I'm gonna hopefully show you guys a trick. So I'm not gonna color the whole thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to color in the shadow and I'm kind of delineating the shadow as I go. And I'm not being too careful about it because I'm gonna go in with that water marker, I know can't keep my hands off of it. It does increase the working time because you're adding water to the page. So it's gonna take longer to dry. And that's our first layer. Then I'm gonna come back in and tighten it up. Now I wanna do her eyes and I want something that might pop. For her hair, I was kind of thinking pink and purple for her eyes. Oh man, I like unnatural eye colors. I kind of want to do like yellow, yellow green, but the yellow green I want is in the fine tip, which I don't care for. So what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start applying yellow. And you're going to want to clean off your brush because picked up a little bit of blue. We just don't want to ruin the brush. Right into wet. I'm going to apply my first layer of kiwi and I want to note that it's starting to abrade the paper a little bit. This paper has been through a lot. I'm kind of impressed that this little Bristol paper is handling this as well as it is because Bristol, cheap Bristol tends not to want to be worked too much. It likes to be lazy. It doesn't want to have to go to work. So you usually try to limit how much you make your cheaper still do. And I'm really kind of pushing it. Okay, let's see. Then seafoam green, that's gonna be like, yeah, don't want that. What are you? Jungle green, okay. And I am slightly abrading the paper surface, which is kind of a bummer. I hate doing that because it affects 
how it handles, but well, we'll, we'll deal. And then we're gonna do our first layer on her hair. And I mean, all the colors I want are in the fine tip. I don't wanna start with the fine tip. So I guess I'm kind of stuck doing something. Oh, that's not nearly as brilliant as I thought it would be. I swatched these markers too. Another piece of salt. Getting what I deserve after that. Jane Davenport Bright's video. My salt is coming to haunt me. Maybe I do so many mermaids because I'm so salty. And they're salty too. So basically what I'm doing is I'm not even being careful. I'm just kind of doing a fill because I'm going to go in with the da -da 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 -da, the water brush, of course, big surprise. I'm going to use that to help me sort of blend my color out, lighten my color a bit because we don't have any good intermediate colors to use as blending markers to help blend colors out or to help build colors up. Ooh, another piece of salt. My goodness, so salty. Actually, I actually think these markers might have a little less glycerin than the other brush markers I was showing you guys. And they're also not quite as juicy. Just really plowing through that salt there. Like I said, I'm not being super careful. I am going to work fast though because, or trying to work fast because water-based markers, they will remain water reactive even after they've dried, but they lose some of that water reactivity. So I'm trying to work as quickly as I can so that I can take advantage of that and use it. And by the way, you don't have to use a water brush with this. You can use any brush that you like. Um, I didn't put anything special in the water. I didn't, I've often thought about like adding glycerin to my water brushes and seeing if that would help because I have that vegetable glycerin in my art collection. But I have not done anything special with it. So I just want you guys to know that so that you can feel free to try and replicate what I'm doing. You could also honestly do a lot of this with Crayola Super Tips. If you like what you see and you don't want to have to buy like four different sets of Crayola signature markers. Um, the reason I'm not using Super Tips for some of this is because I left my big 100 set in Luling because I love doing accessible art tutorials while I'm kind of in my home, hometown and my childhood home. I don't know, there's something about it that just makes me really, really want to do those kind of videos again. I guess it reminds me of being a kid who had very limited access to art supplies. Makes me feel like Scrooge at the end of A Christmas Carol, you know, full of the spirit of giving and whatnot. But um, you could do this with super tips. Like I said, the only reason I'm not doing this with super tips is because my big set is in Louisiana. And that's the set. If you're doing super tips, I recommend you get the 100 piece set. It's 14 bucks. It's really a good deal. And you get lots of colors, including colors that can be used as skin tones, you know, topic of the day, topic of the year. Please, more skin tones always. start tightening up the sand dollar sand dollar dollar bill and I'm going to add another layer of shadow or another layer of color really to the inside of the yaw and then I'm going to go ahead and do this girl's eyebrows I really should have taped this thing down to like, I keep a uh, chipboard around. Should have taped it to that. Should have been smart, so please be smarter than me. I believe in you. You are a smart person. Okay, what color do I want her tail proper to be? I think this dark blue is really nice. So while her hair dries, I'll use this dark blue. 
It is really nice. And then I'll show you guys a trick, because I'm full of those. In my opinion, art tricks are the best magic tricks. And some people call them hacks, and it's kind of like, mm. We're not hacking anything together. Oh, yes, I am quite pedantic. How did you know? Okay, so we're gonna give that a couple of seconds to dry. We're gonna grab a paper towel. We're gonna grab our, let's actually use our Eco Line Blender for this, shall we? And I'm doing little circles with our blender. And then, quick, 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 will it work? Kinda. Paper towel picked it up. Let's do it again. It actually works quite well with water, but since I've now applied the Eco Line Blender to it, it will not work as well. We can try. We can always try. But something about all the glycerin in the Eco Line Blender does not always play well with water. So we'll do it with water now. Now that I've you know, torn up the paper a bit. And then finding a clean place on the paper towel. Okay, so we got some lifting. We've got lift off. And we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna tighten that up a little bit. And we're gonna go back in to her hair do layer number two. Working a little more carefully this time. I'm gonna wanna add purple to her hair, so I also need to keep in mind that I can't do too many layers because I will lose my ability to add additional layers. That's the downfall of these kind of water-based markers is that the glycerin tends to build up and you can't put anything new down on the paper. But when you consider the price tag, you're really getting a lot for what you're, you're paying, especially, you know, a few magic tricks. You can really use water-based markers for a lot. I've been seeing people do the Crayola versus whatever brand they choose of alcohol markers. And I always get really excited by the thought because I know how to do a lot of tricks at, by this point in time with Crayola. So I can make my Crayolas look pretty good. And I am sort of plotting out when I'm gonna do that. I have a busy March and a busy start to April, but maybe, maybe late April I can do that. And then I want it to be the same image, but I'm lazy and I don't want to have to draw and ink the same image twice. So what I'm probably going to do is use my toner printer to print it, but my toner printer does not like heavier papers. So takes a little, takes, it's going to take a little bit of being strategic. Probably do the alcohol marker piece first and then try to replicate what I can achieve with that using Crayolas. So then I can set the bar kind of high and we can either fly or fail. Blocking in sections of purple. And I mean, I've really abused this paper and these markers are still being pretty gentle on it. So I'm impressed. This is something I could not do with super tips because super tips are not as flexible and they're not as gentle. We want the darker color with the brush tip. Use purple mountain marker. That color was released when I was in third grade and I was gaga for it. It was like cornflower blue, salmon, seafoam green, and then purple mountain came out. And it was like, I have my complete pastel set. Life was good for third grade back. And we're going to go back in with our blue and we're going to tighten up some of those scales. We, and also add new scales because we can get another layer in now. I'm just using you know, 
some circular movements for this. Super easy. And then we've got this tail. Okay, so we've used almost every color. Uh, but kind of looking at it, I'm like, mm, where do I want to add additional details? So what do you guys think? Do you think? I have to look at the name every time, gosh. And it's not on the packaging either. So, <laughs> so I got to go dig it up. Wow. Do you think these Crayola markers are a good addition to your Crayola collection? Or do you think you're gonna hold out? You don't really need them. Not really for you. Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna add some additional little details in white because I can and because I don't know when to stop. I've got a real problem. So I am using PH Martin Bleed Proof White. And I just dipped my water brush in there, really kind of wiggled it around so that it could kind of activate some of that white pigment. Now I'm just splashing it around, using it for a nice kind of watery, bubbly effect. Give that a little bit of a chance to dry. Okay, using same water brush, same bleed proof white. Sometimes I can get this to go for me, sometimes I can't. You probably have seen this in other videos. I'm just going to use this to add a few white details here and there. I always feel like adding white details really kind of helps the character come to life. Adds a bit of animation. Makes the piece a little more fun. So I always try to add white highlights, sparkles to the eyes, highlights in the hair, you know. It doesn't take long. It's actually kind of my favorite part of a lot of this because it really pulls things together and sometimes I like to leave it as it is because I like what I was able to do kind of just in my first stages but sometimes it's nice to go in and add some highlights and now that I'm getting a little bit better control with the water brush and the bleed proof white it's fun because I can I have some control I can also control like the consistency just with my hand I can do spray effects and it's also really easy to clean it out yeah she's pretty cute and I did this with just some water-based markers some Crayola markers Unfortunately, my camera can't quite capture the color. Hopefully I can do something to fix that. And you guys can actually see how pretty she is. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. As always, it was a pleasure. Which do you guys like better? This piece that I created with these water-based markers or this piece that I created with Crayola's first alcohol markers. Which mermaid is cuter? Hmm, I like the bright colors on her, but I like the softness on this mermaid, but I really love the sort of splash techniques. Let me know, you guys, in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful, useful, and informative. I hope for some of you it was inspiring and you learned a few new techniques for your water-based markers. And I hope I was able to show you some things that you can use to help make the kind of art you wanna make. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you feel the inclination, if you're feeling the love, there's a few ways you can help. One, you can write into Crayola and ask them to please release more multicultural products, please. 
please. <laughs> there are so many deserving kids and adults who deserve to be able to create realistic depictions of themselves and their skin tones. So we really need more representation for that or more supplies that offer a blendable range or mixable range of colors since I would never dream of asking Windsor and Newton to release more skin tones in their watercolor line because I can mix those colors. But when it comes to alcohol markers and water-based markers, it's harder to mix those sort of colors. So it would be really nice if we saw some more support there. And I know it would mean the world to lots of kids and teenagers who just want to make fun, cute, playful art or cool, awesome, edgy art, you know, whatever is your jam. So if you're feeling the love, if you maybe want to help make a difference, write into Crayola and ask them to please release more multicultural products. Uh, if you want to help me, you can check out some of my other videos here on this channel. You can subscribe and click that little bell button so that you don't miss updates. Or you can head on over to my Patreon and join the Art Nerd community and help make videos like this possible. You can find out information over on patreon.com slash natosu. If you're looking for more art inspiration, art tutorials, and art supply reviews, head on over to natosu.blogspot.com and check out my alcohol marker section or my watercolor basic section or any section that strikes your fancy. I've been reviewing art supplies for six plus years and I've been sharing my experiences as an artist for like t almost 10 years now. So please head on over and check that out. Lastly, if you like my art, if you think it's cute, why not read my adorable all ages free to read webcomic, Seven Inch Kara. It follows the adventures of a super cute Lilliputian girl named Kara as she meets humans and rides cats. You can check that out at seveninchkara.com or seveninchkara.com tumblr.com and you can keep up with those adventures through archive binge I, I will see you guys again really soon i hope you guys have a great day and thank you so much for joining me hanging out bye guys